Hi, it's Anna. Welcome back to Books on the Go. Sorry, it's been so long. Um, I am now reading only the books on my TBR. It's very fun and liberating, but hard not to be buying new books. Um, and on the podcast, we've been doing a keep or cull segment. So I thought I'd give you an update as I unhaul some of my books. But first, let me show you the progress that I've already made on the shelf. I'll just change the view. So I'm just going to show you my three main TBR shelves that I'm trying to read through and look at the gaps we have already from my project just working through them I still have so much reading to go but these are books that I was not getting to because I was constantly reading contemporary books for the podcast and book clubs um, so I'm really excited I don't know how I'll go with all of these. How long do you think it will take me? Who knows? Okay, so now I'll do a quick unhaul. I'll show you all of the books that I have already taken off the shelf or some of them didn't even make it onto the shelf um, and that I'm not keeping. So first of all, you need to know by Nicola Moriarty. So this is Leanne Moriarty's sister and also, wouldn't you know it, a fantastic writer. This is a contemporary Australian fiction and it's not dissimilar to some of Leanne Moriarty's earlier books in that it's set on the north shores of Sydney and um, a couple of families, I think, or is it one family? And it's well done and it keeps you turning the page, keeps you guessing. I didn't love, love it in the sense that I need to keep it on my shelf, but it was good. I think if you liked uh, Three Wishes and The Husband's Secret and those earlier Leanne Moriarty books, you would enjoy this one. So that uh, is going to the library. The next one, and that, these are books that we did for our book club. So this one as well, The Push by Ashley Audrain. And I didn't love this. It did keep me turning the pages to see what the mystery was. But essentially, it's a woman who's sitting outside who looks like ex-husband's house, but he's with a new wife. Um, and it's about their daughter who was, it's a bit we need to talk about Kevin-esque in that the mother has always felt that the daughter was a bit wrong and the husband didn't believe her, um, but things kept happening. And so it's very dark, didn't love it. I thought it was successful, it was well done, um, but in the same way that I didn't particularly love we need to talk about Kevin and I found it quite claustrophobic and dark, this was similar. So depending if you liked that book, this is a very, you know, fresh take on that sort of story without giving away spoilers. So that's the push going to the library. And the third one we did for our book club is Mrs. March by Virginia Fato. And this is a bit Patricia Highsmith-esque. I did not finish it. It was just a bit slow for me. But Mrs. March, who goes into the patisserie. Um, her husband's George March, Mr. March, a famous novelist and has written a book and the patisserie owner says, oh, I recognised you as the main character and Mrs. March is horrified. Um, but it, it all just goes quite slowly and everything's painstakingly described and, and beautifully described, but quite mannered and uh, I think there's meant to be a slow burning mystery around it all, but I couldn't quite work out what era it was or why she keeps referring to herself as Mrs. March and him as Mr. March and so on. So I think there's probably, she has secrets to hide as well, but I didn't really have the patience. So I love the cover, but um, didn't get on with that one. Mrs. March is going to the library. This one, A Necessary Evil by Abby Amukaji. I love this series. This is a crime mystery sort of crime series set in colonial India in the 1920s. And it's Colonel Wyndham, I think, and his offsider is Surrender Not, which is an, an Indian name that the joke is that Colonel Wyndham can't pronounce it. So he calls him Surrender Not. And this one is sort of a political intrigue. Uh, I think, yeah, there's a killing, someone dies at the beginning of it, and then there's a mystery and they, they travel to the, the other family members' 
region and so on and it was quite complicated I didn't love it as much as the first one of rising man but I've heard I think the third one smoke and ashes is really good so I'll still go on with reading the series but um, this one I liked it I do like his writing he's got a sense of humor and you do get immersed into that setting of India in the 1920s but didn't sort of love 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 it then we have she is haunted by Paige Clark, who's an Australian author. I don't know if this is going to the library. I might be keeping this one. It's a collection of short stories. They're really fresh, really excellent. She's a Chinese American Australian author. Um, I think is one to watch. I'd love to read what, you know, if she writes a novel next, hopefully. But these are really interesting stories. There's a lot about mother-daughter relationships. There's quite a good dry sense of humour as well running through them and I enjoyed them. So I'm not a huge, I'm not big on short stories, but this is definitely worth checking out. So I think I might be keeping that. I'm not sure. I don't know, that just snuck in there. And then we have Things Are Against Us by Lucy Ellman. I absolutely loved Duck's Newburyport, one of my favorite books. Um, and I was sent this beautiful, I love the, the cover um, collection of essays. I didn't love them in the same way, but I just, I think her mind is so interesting and I love the way she thinks. And she's got a really fresh way of describing things and and her writing is is always interesting um so i liked these but i think i prefer I, w I want another novel so hopefully one is coming it probably has come i'm probably out of date um because that's how long these things are sitting on the shelf for but yeah really love stuck's newberry port so um i'll be buying whatever lucy elman does next and then Birds Art Life by Kayo McClear, which was sent to me by Sean Mooney. And thank you, Sean. This was a really lovely book. Um, it's sort of part memoir or not even quite memoir, but it's her writing about her days with a friend she meets who's into bird watching or birding. And she starts to get into it and just starts to stop and notice things as I think you do when you slow down and, and just stop and notice things and pay attention to things and so it's quite meditative and then she sometimes goes back to talk about memories and just other things that she's doing. Um, so I didn't love it in the sense it wasn't completely gripping and compelling but it was really just a lovely gentle read so I enjoyed it so that's Birds Art Live. Now we have The Trees by Percival Everett. Annie and I did this on the podcast. Um, it won the uh, it was shortlisted for the Booker Prize and I, f I had very mixed feelings. I liked the humour. I thought it was very strong um, and it was thought provoking, uh, but it jarred a little bit with me just because the tone and then the content was quite serious and heavy and yet the tone was quite flippant and I realised that was deliberate, of course, um, but also the speculative nature didn't quite work for me. It was quite far-fetched and so I felt a bit distanced from it. But yeah, it was interesting. It was a very mixed feelings sort of experience, but a strong book. I think Annie liked it a lot more. So let me know if you've read this one. That's The Trees by Percival Everett. My Monticello by Jocelyn Nicole Johnson, um, about a group of people that go up to, oh, whose house was it? The plantation home of Thomas Jefferson. And they have very, well, a mixed emotional response because um, there's a history of slavery there. And I, I sort of enjoyed this. I thought it was really good, but it's not, it hasn't stayed with me. So I might let this one go. Um, but again, I love the cover. I thought it was good. Um, I'm being quite ruthless with these people cull segments. Para and this is another example. Paradise by Fernanda Melchor, translated by Sophie Hughes. Another excellent whirlwind by Fernanda Melchor. She's an amazing writer, a, quite a dark topic again with a lot of brutality and violence set on a housing estate um, in Mexico and there's two teenage boys and one of them um, commits a crime and I 
thought this was absolutely brilliant, but I don't think I want to revisit it. It was quite brutal. And so I think I might let it go just so that someone else can read it. I am keeping Hurricane Season, which I really loved. Um, and I'll read uh, again, whatever Fernanda Melchor writes next. But this one, I, I didn't love it as much. So I'm letting it go. That's Paradise. And then we have, just I pulled this actually off my shelves because then I had to make room for other books to go on. Free Food for Millionaires by Min Jin Lee. So this I've just taken down from my shelf. It had been in a keep shelf, um, but I've kept Pachinko. I liked this, but I didn't love it as much as Pachinko. And so I'm letting it go. And I'm still waiting. I think there's meant to be a third one coming. It was sort of a loose trilogy. But anyway, let me know if you know what's happening with the next book by Min Jin Lee. Um, but again, this was really good. Uh, set in New York, so slightly different, but an interesting story. And again, quite an immersive read, like Pachinko, very long, and you just get totally swept up in it. And I think I loved Pachinko a bit more, so I'm keeping that one. So that is the end of the Keep or Cull. They are all the books that I'm culling, quite a few. And then the one that I've just pulled off the shelf that has been there a long, long time, The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bolgakov, translated by Michael Glenny. And this has been on my shelf for about 11 years, so I can't believe it. I'm finally reading it. Annie and I are going to do it on the podcast. I'm enjoying it so far. It's quite satirical, as you might know, because most of you would have read it, I'm sure, and slightly absurdist, but also, um, as often happens with classics, still resonating in today's world. Um, I'm only early days, but I will keep you posted. Let me know what you've been reading, and I will see you soon. Bye.